Hi everybody, in this uh, tutorial I've had a request to, uh, where somebody asked about positioning a crow that they got a picture of. I think it's a crow, I'm not sure what type of bird it is, on top of this, uh, perched on top of this, this branch here. So I'm going to kind of show this in After Effects. What they did, they shot two bits of footage here. This one and that's uh, apparently out in the desert here as we play, and it's just this kind of dead cut off tree out in the middle of the desert. And they wanted to, for the piece that they're doing, they needed to have like a bird standing on top of this, like a an old uh, crow or raven or whatever, sitting on top of that. So they happen to get a shot of a crow here, uh, two crows sitting up on a light post. And what they wanted to do was, uh, using After Effects, uh, place this thing and make it look like it's perched on top of the tree. I guess this sort of thing, let's do just a quick little uh, thing in, in, uh, in Premiere and show, and show what we're kind of up against. I'm just going to kind of do a little crop on this. The tutorial is not on how to do this in Premiere, it's how to do it in After Effects. So we're, we're, we're going to do that. But I kind of want to show what they we're starting with here. There we go. So this is kind of what they're going for. They wanted to have this crow put there and have it actually be its tail behind the tree so it's looking at us. The biggest issue that we have here is basically that the crow is on that they have is uh, stuck on top of this pole. Luckily this shot was a static shot. They had this on a tripod so it is holding still which makes it a lot easier to do. And the tree shot, this would not be difficult if they were doing a pan or a tilt or something. It would be possible to do some motion tracking and lock the crow to the tree uh, which would be fine as well. But this shot is also a static shot. So this is uh, going to be somewhat simple, but one thing that we need to notice here is that the crows are against a completely blue sky. And if you the, the shot that they want to composite them into, they, it is against a cloudy sky here. So that's not too much of a problem. So we're going to uh, send this over to After Effects. I'm going to right click on these two uh, layers here. So let's turn this one back on. I'm going to right click on these two layers and I'm going to replace this with After Effects Composition. It's going to ask what I want to name it as. I'm just going to overwrite my earlier project here, but you can name it and save it. And it brings these two layers in here ready to go. Shift question mark that was zoomed in quite a bit. Uh, so what I'm going to do first of all is I've uh, luckily right here we'll notice because I, me I mentioned the clouds before. If we click on this, notice the clouds in the background right there. I'm going to turn this on the third quality so it processes a little faster. You notice the clouds in the background. We want to put this bird right on top of this perch and perched right there. But as we look at this layer here, notice that we got all this blue back here. We can actually use that as a chroma key. Instead of trying to mask this bird off and follow its, its movement, we can actually do a chroma key like it was in front of a blue screen. I'm going to go to my effects and type in key light. And it brings up this combo filter package right here, the key light. Uh, don't choose this one, choose this top one. This has three, three um, filters together. With Starting with the key light, I'm going to drag and drop it onto the birds. Uh, now I've got my key light, my key cleaner, and my advanced spill suppressor over here. I'm going to go on screen click color. And I click on this little, well, first of all, let's turn off the tree below it so we don't see anything below it. But, uh, and I'm going to select the, the screen color, come over here to a blue color, and click somewhere in the blue, and it keys out the blue. I'm going to pull down my little RGB thingy here and go down to uh, tell it to show my alpha channel. So it's showing what it's keying out and what it's leaving in. And right there is kind of a uh, kind of dirty key. It's not really doing too well here. So I'm going to grab my gain. I'm going to go up to maybe 107 and see. And then that got rid of that noise around the edge. You don't want to get too aggressive here on the gain and balance if you can help it. But uh, it looks like it needs it a little bit. I'm going to take this down the screen balance. So it brings in the whites a little bit to let's try 85. Uh, that, that it seems like it's doing the maximum balance that it can get. Let me go down to 65 just to see if it does do anything. And it doesn't, so I'm going to go back up to about 90 and just leave it there. Uh, it does a little bit. Let's go back down to 85. Um, I'm going to screen. I'm going to uh, do screen pre-blur, which is going to kind of soften the edges of the screen, at the, the screen edges, like around the edges where it's doing the key, and do it by by two to kind of. Uh, blur, blur the screen a little bit and blend it in a little bit more, which makes it look a little more natural. I'm going to go down to screen matte. We're going to work on the matte really quick. Quick. I do not need to clip the black. The black looks pretty clean, but I am going to clip the white. Let's go down to 90 on the white, and it's starting to bring some of the whites back. Looks like we're going to have to get a little bit aggressive here. Wouldn't recommend going down past like 75 or 70, but I might have to do it here. Let's go to 75, and there we go. It's starting to get, it's starting to eat into those birds there and get get it whiter. 70. I'm going to try 70 and see how it does. Then I'm going to uh, shrink the mat by about one pixel and we're going to soften the pixel, soften the mask by about one pixel as well. I am going to try to despot the white a little bit, see if that helps. Let's go up to about like 20 and see. Uh, that, that cleaned up the noise in here a little bit. That's going to try to hide that, maybe up to 50 and make it not so aggressive because it's eaten into the beak, beak of the bird up there. So maybe around 10. Let's see how that works. 
Now as we turn this, uh, now as we go back to RGB here, it says showing our alpha, we can see it's like key these birds out. Let's put the background back in and kind of see what we got here. And that's looking like they're keyed in there a bit. So a couple other things I could do here because I'm, I'm noticing kind of some blue like aura around the birds here, which might look a little natural considering the light, but let's let's try to hit, let's hit the uh, advanced spill suppressor, see what it does. And that brings back a little bit of natural color from the birds. It gets rid of the blue spill. It's happening from the, the background light. And I'm also going to reduce chatter just in case this footage is compressed and, uh, and clean up any noise that I may have. So now I'm going to scale this. I'm going to hit S for my scale. I'm going to scale this down to about the size that I want. I'm going to grab this bird and move it over so it's going to be stamped, perched up on this back here. Let's make that a little bit smaller, maybe around like right there to make it look like kind of the natural size that it should be, I'm guessing. And there we go. So now it just looks like this bar is just kind of broken off and stuck up there and these two birds are sitting there. So, uh, so let's go the rest of the way. We're going to make it look like its tail is kind of behind the log here. So what I'm going to do is select this tree. I'm going to duplicate it, Control D or Command D on a Mac, and it duplicates that layer. I'm going to drag this on top, and we're going to cut out a little branch to cover um, the bird's tail here. So I'm going to Option and Zoom, or Alt and Zoom. I'm going to choose my pen tool, which is G for shortcut, and I'm going to try to go down far enough to block out that bird's tail. So I'm going to guess right about here, click and drag, click and drag to kind of make a, a Bezier curve and get the best curve, and especially since this, this is a static shot where the camera's not moving, um, I'm going to want to get this as like accurate as possible here. So I'm going to move across and cut it, and there we go. We've got this layer on top. What we've got, I'm going to hit V for my arrow tool, select this, and you can see this is a free floating log. It's got this background, the bird, and then on top of it, we're putting this log. Fine tune that a little bit. And now I'm going to feather. I'm going to hit F for feather, and I'm going to change. The, I'm going to feather this by let's say 1.5 pixels. Will probably be plenty to soften just the edge there a little bit. Now I'm going to get that bird exactly where I want that bird at. I'm going to position the bird here. Let's move this down. I'm going to change the name of this top layer so I can keep track of things. I'm going to hit Enter with it selected, and then I'm going to type in call it branch in front. With the branch in front now, I'm going to re get the bird exactly where I want it positioned. I'm just going to select that layer, go up here, select it, and move it down. And notice, I want its feet just maybe over, just over the tippy top here. So I could rotate that a little bit. I'm going to hit W for rotate. Actually, let's let's grab my pan behind tool, which sets the anchor point. I'm going to hit Y for that. It grabs this little thing right here. That'll be the uh, point that it rotates around. W for rotate, and rotate it around that, and kind of even it out with a log there. And I can actually just use my arrows up and down. I'm going to nudge that down until its feet are kind of barely sticking up above the log there like that. And maybe a little bit more rotate because it's higher on this end than it is on the other end. Just rotate right about there. And I can move that up a little bit more right there. That's exactly where I want that bird at. So now the other thing we've got to do is get rid of this pole and get rid of this bird on this side. So I'm going to grab the crow layer and I'm going to duplicate it once and duplicate it again. We're going to use these layers later because what I'm going to use these two layers for, they don't have any attributes on them right now, so I want to leave those alone. So I'm going to zoom up. I'm going to get, I'm going to use one to get rid of the bar on the, on the left-hand wing. This is its right hand, but I'm saying camera left and right. So the, on camera left and camera right, uh, we're going to use a composite over here to get rid of this pole over here and a composite to get rid of this pole over here. So I'm going to rename this layer left wing, rename this one right wing, Got a little hidden political agenda right here. Uh, you guys guess which one I'm leaning towards right now. Um, that was a really stupid joke, but anyway, uh, let's continue. So now let's get let's do kind of a garbage man to get rid of the bar on this side and the bird on this side. So I'm going to hit H for hand, move this over here, and I'm going to select this layer, the best curl layer, and we're going to choose a mask. G for my uh, pen tool. And I'm going to click up here, click down here, and... And click down here again, and I'm going to click and drag a little bit just to make a little bit of a bezier so I can manipulate that. Click down here, over here, here, and here. I'm writing the line of that wing right there is what I'm trying to do. And right now it doesn't look like anything happened because I've got these two layers on. I'm going to shut those off right now, but there we go. Our mask, it looks like it's it's just masked this, uh, this uh, street light here, but I am going to hit M for mask, and I'm going to pull this down and say we're going to subtract instead of add on the on the blend mode. So subtract, there we go, I got rid of it. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Click up here, right down the middle, add another node right here. I'm sure, I'll show you why I'm adding a node down here. But I'm gonna click and drag to make this a curve. So I can shape that, click and drag down here to make that a curve. Down here, over, over enough to get that whole bird out of there. And now we're going to do the same thing and subtract this one instead, and boom. All right, so we're getting there. So we've uh, got rid of those things. We still have the bar on the side of the wing here. But what we've got to do is watch as we play through this. 
Notice its wing kind of goes out over that bar a little bit, like right there and back, and past the mask. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do a and a quick animation on the mask here. Let's go to mask one, and I'm gonna get this mask exactly where I want it to start. I'm gonna get it, move it in a little bit so it eats into this wing a little bit. I'm gonna eat into the wing a little bit because we're gonna replace a little bit of the wing. And I'm gonna turn on my mask path. Click that on now. Now we're at my beginning point. I'm gonna nudge down. I'm gonna use. I'm gonna go page down here. Page down, page down, page down to advance by frames. And I'm going to grab these two nodes here and readjust them to add an animation. And I'm going to nudge down just a couple frames and its wing starts moving out. So I'm going to reposition these nodes so it still kind of covers that wing. And it, and it moves back a little bit. So now it animates along. Now that mask animates along with his wing. And I'm going to continue doing this, kind of shaping that along the wing so it eliminates all the pull to the, the left of the wing. And then I'm going to animate, and then I'm going to do the same thing on mask number two over here. And I'm going to animate that. And I'm going to do that like every like three or four frames. I'm going to move ahead like three or four frames, grab these again with my mask path turned on, and move these out and reposition it to kind of block out that, that just the very, very edge of the wing there. So I'm going to continue doing that on both the right and the left. And then I'm going to come back and show you the results. All right, now that I am done with that, let's show you what I've done here. I'm going to select this and show you these uh, these animated layers here. And uh, here's my, let's open up my masks. And that's like mask one. Here's my mask one here on the left. As I move that back and forth, you can see as this thing moves its wing, I've animated just slightly. I've kind of eaten it into the wing a little bit, so we're going to replace this wing. But I've gotten rid of the pole to the left and to the right here with those animated uh, masks here. So you can see as it moves its wings in, I moved the, I, I animated the mask in. You can see that happening there, and I moved them in and out as they move. So as it's, it kind of fixes its wings and pulls them in, and then it just kind of freezes and sits there. So I really just had to do it kind of toward the beginning here and not toward the end. So the next part is going to be covering up these wings here. So let's turn on the left wing here, and it kind of brings back the layer how it was earlier. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow a chunk of this wing up here, because this wing kind of moves the same right as this one, this portion down here does. So I'm going to choose my pen tool, hit G, and I'm going to kind of click a little ways away from the wing here and kind of drag a circle around kind of a big chunk of this wing here. There we go. So now what I've got is this uh, free floating part of the wing here. And I'm going to use it to kind of blend into this portion down here. I am going to grab my anchor tool here. I'm going to hit Y and grab this uh, pan behind tool and put it right there in the center. Hit W so now it will kind of rotate around that. Hit V for my arrow tool and move it up here and kind of get that to fit in as best as I can. There we go. And now it is covering the pipe completely. But as we play through, look how it kind of changed shape and kind of disappears. What I'm going to do is I'm going to animate this a little bit. And my mask is kind of too far away to get a little white. And that actually might look good. Like might, might look like a little bit, little bit of white on the wing. But I could get rid of that just by going to my mask here. Bringing that in a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to feather that a little bit by about like three pixels just to feather it in. So let's take a look at what, what it does so far. And actually, that looks pretty good up until the end. And it's a, and sometimes it's a little too bulgy. So what I can do, if I want, if I get nitpicky with this, we could actually use the puppet tool. Here, I'm going to select this. I'm going to go up and choose my puppet tool. I'm going to um, put a pivot point there. Maybe two in the middle and one on the end here. And I'm going to go down and uh, let's look at our puppet tool. Arrow this down, go to my mesh down here, go to deform. We find these puppet pin tools, arrow all these down, and open up my keyframes for this. And it's already added my first keyframe. So I can kind of readjust these kind of here to get them to fit and match this wing a little bit more. See, I can kind of deform this to kind of match the shape, the contour of the wing. Then I can move out and see where it like loses shape. Right about there, it starts losing shape. So I can grab here and start dragging this out again and kind of deform this. I mean, I probably only have to do this a few times to get it to match there. And right here toward the end, it changes. It kind of comes off the, the wing here. So I'm going to go right about there, and we're going to drag this in there, there. It's a little too far, right about there. And there we go. Now it matches the contour of the wing. So let's take a look at that, see how that looks. And that looks really good on the left-hand side. That looks pretty good on the left-hand side there. And now I'm going to do the same to my right-hand side and finish this up. So I'm going to do the same thing to my right. I'm going to go up to my right wing. I'm going to select a chunk off of that right wing. And I'm going to do it but on the opposite side. So which is the exact same process as you saw here. So I'm going to finish that and then I'll come back.
Now that I'm done with the right hand side, play through it and you can see the bird kind of doesn't seem to match like the contrast here. So what I can do is I can grab, I'm going to grab all three of these layers right here. I'm going to right click on there, pre-compose, and, and I'm going to move all attributes into the new composition. Call it final bird, hit OK. And now we're going to go to, I'm going to go over to my effects and find the Lumetri color corrector. Drag and drop that onto the, the final bird there. And now we can do things like changing contrast. I can pull down the basic correction and I can grab the contrast. I can drag that down. Or we can even go to our curves here and do it on the curves. Bring down the highlights there. Boost up the mids so it's a little brighter. Boost up the darks. And then kill some of the contrast. to get it to kind of match this image. And then it can be color corrected and, and matched later on. And there we go. And now it looks like the bird's sitting on top of the of the branch there, and we can, took it off from some photography they had from it sitting across a light pole. And uh, and there you go. If you have any questions, please post them. Thanks for watching.